Today we're here with artist Kate Lysett. What is your background and what are your earliest memories of painting? My professional background is textile design after I specialised in textile design at university and then I worked as a commercial textile designer for a long time which was fun because it meant lots of drawing but it was very limiting for design briefs and colourways so I started to paint got quite carried away with very opulent colours because the colour palettes I had to use for work were very sterile and the working environment was very sterile. In the end the balance tipped from sterile textile design to very painty painter. And how long did it take you to develop your style? Because it's a very particular style and I think it must be quite hard for any artist to find something original but when you do it's kind of that eureka moment isn't it? You go wow I've got it. So how long did it take you to find your style? I think style's developing all the time. Since I started painting the landscapes about seven years ago when I first moved to Hebden so that was quite a dramatic change because everything had been abstract and pattern based before then and suddenly I started playing landscapes. But the landscapes then were simpler, quite naive in style, and these days they're much more complicated, possibly because I know the area now, and I'm aware of the pathways through things. But going back to elements that are prominent in my style now, when I was at university, I used to, I started using um, gold threads and gold wire and setting things like butterfly wings in, in resin. So, so building things up, and, and I also used to put little pieces of solder and little pieces of um, cigarette packet foil inside the resin because I love the texture and I love, I love the gold, I love the richness of it. And so what I do now is, is a development from that thing and, you know, it will continue to develop. Are you a little bit of a magpie? Are you attracted to bright, sparkly things? Absolutely. Sometimes I'll find a, I'll find a tube of, of paint or a bottle of ink and that will inform often a, a whole range of a whole range of work. A couple of years ago I found a colour called Grecian Olive, magic colour ink. Um, and it was it was perfect to Hebden Bridge, that kind of slightly sludgy green that sits underneath all the bright colours in the winter time. So I do I get I collect tubes and and I'm very interested in the colours that are underneath colours. Mm. So a wall isn't just grey. No wall is grey. But walls are often kind of scarlet underneath layers of pinks and then building whites on top. So it may look white, but it's a very hot white. Or a grey, but it's got lots of yellows and oranges underneath it. So it's a really warm stone. So you're quite layered in your thinking, aren't you? And kind of quite tactile as well. Is that from your background? It's the textile design. When I was at college, our sketchbooks were very important. And sketchbooks were often, they, they never closed. They always kind of sat at just under, under a right angle thickness, pages built out by layers of glue and lots and lots of wax. And, and I remember once going to a school with my university group and the children going through all our work and one little girl saying of mine, your sketchbooks would be really nice for a blind person. And I think it's, I don't know whether someone in her family was blind or something, but she was feeling the pages and she could mm. feel, because I used to do things like stitch in wire or make a hole in the paper and sew in a skeleton leaf that I'd found um, and pull the edges together to the paper with gold threads and, you know, things that have long since fallen apart. Mm. But yes, yes, the, the feel of things is quite important. And that's, that's why I, I put the hand finish on the prints, really, because it's... Um, it has to lift it. No, I like that. They have to have. A, they have a texture. They have a, and the surface changes as well. With the, when the light changes on the day, on the on the surface of the picture, certain hills get highlighted. What is the process behind your work? I collect details in the same way that I collect sweetie papers and tubes of paint. So I'll be out and about. I always have a notebook with me, and it's always full of scribbles that no one else can understand. So sometimes a painting will come to you, or, or the composition will come to you as a whole. And sometimes you'll be out and you'll see a group of flower pots that are, you know, beautifully colourful or um, a vent or something that's a very pretty pattern. Or I was out in the woods the other day and I ended up doing a whole painting out there. Once you've found your location, how do you then begin the process of creating a painting? On, on the occasion where I was out in the woods, I happened to be out for a walk. I had a bag with inks and brushes and... Not a lot of things, but I had a piece of paper stretched on a, on a board. So what's in your artist's bag? What's in my artist's bag? 
I have a roll of pencils and and I have very particular old favourites. I like to I like to draw with blues and I like to draw with brown. Don't know why, just do. So um particular tones of slaty grey and and Prussian blue and quite pale blues. I like to sketch with those. And possibly a pot of ink and a couple of good brushes. Always a flask of tea. Do you sketch first? I sketch first. Yeah. I often sketch very basic ideas in my little notebook, the one that I always have. And then I might take it up to either a bigger sketchbook or when I was out in the woods, I had this piece of stretched paper that had layers of ink on it already. I started it, I started sketching it and then I started painting it in the woods and kind of processing what I was seeing, which started off as, as the railings and the wall that the railings were in, and the trees growing around the railings. And then behind it was quite a sunlit hill. So behind the kind of the dark of the stone and the dark of the trees, there was quite a lot of bright colours behind a lot of woodland. But and how long did it take you to finish a painting from beginning to end? Sometimes days, sometimes months. Sometimes you get to a point with a picture and you have to put it away until it behaves. <laughs> Sometimes you kind of you reach a dead end and you just have to you have to come back to it because you stop seeing it. Uh, but the one in the woods just just happened from beginning to end. It was it kind of painted itself. Sometimes they do. Do you find it hard to name a, a painting, or does it just come? What you mean giving it a title? Yeah, I find that very hard. Sometimes a pic comes into my head straight away. Mm. Very often, um, my mother-in-law names them for me. <laughs> I don't know why, it's just the job that she had. Do you dream about your paintings? Do they, do they come to you? Do you go, oh, and I must do that? No, no, I, I always dream about, dream about paintings. And I lay, I lay awake at night in that kind of semi-conscious state and start thinking about combinations of colours and compositions. It, it's quite distracting. Because yeah, I, I think colour, texture and, and form and shape, that's kind of all quite important in your work. And also the, the textile element to it as well. I mean, tell us a little bit about that. The textile element. I think, I think textile artists, they have a way of interpreting things. So textile artists will, will look at a flower in a certain way, a certain way that simplifies it and in a way that they can repeat again and again. And I think with the textile artist's head on, I'm simplifying a landscape. I'm simplifying it to, to layers and paths and areas of warm colours and areas of cold colours so it is kind of a it is a way of simplifying it and of abstracting it. And do you feel like that's helped you as a painter? Yes enormously it's certainly very different I mean I only started doing the textile design at university and when I was doing A levels I think paintings were much more literal. I still had an obsession with colour but the colours were perhaps more literal the interpretations were, were more literal but textile gave me the licence to stylise, which perhaps a painting background wouldn't have done. So what exhibitions have you got coming up? I've got, at the end of the month, I've got my first solo exhibition at Heart, which is 14 new pieces. There were only 13, and then I had a nice afternoon in the woods, and we ended up with an extra one. That's running for a couple of months. That's about 18 months' worth of work going into that. And then I'm doing... The Salt Air Arts Trail in May, Open Studios in July, and then another solo exhibition at Ripley in North Yorkshire in October. So tell us a little bit about the, the next exhibition you've got. What's it called? At the Hart Gallery. That's called Tall Trees and Warm Stone. And it had the title because at the Open Studios last year, a gentleman came round and he said something really nice. He said something about, you really capture the warmth of the stone. And I thought that was such a lovely thing to say and it made my whole weekend because I thought, yes, that's exactly what it is. That's what I really try and do with my, with my colours. It's all about capturing the warmth and it's not black stone, it's not cold stone, it's, mm. it's capturing the heat. What is the main inspiration for your work? I live in Hebden Bridge and on a day-to-day -day basis I, I have three young children and we're always exploring. So up and down um, stone steps and snickets and gimmels and pathways by the river. So my source of inspiration is, is here and my environment and the little explorations that I go on with the children every day. And do they paint as well? <laughs> they do paint, yes. Robin likes to eat paper, but Daisy will quite happily paint. 
Um, they are the twins, and my eldest daughter, Hattie, who's six, will sit and draw for hours. She loves to draw, and we very often draw together. That's really lovely. Do you think she's going to be an artist? Definitely. She already is an artist. Yes. Oh, well, that's amazing. You encourage it, and that's lovely. I encourage it because it's something that, when I was little, I was never happier than with a colouring book or a packet of pencils, and she's so light. But that's nice to see, isn't it? It is. It is. It's lovely. It's very lovely. I always hoped that I would have children that would sit and draw. Yeah. And not ones that like to play football, because I don't know what to do with those children. Because she was inspired by your granddad, wasn't you? Yes. Yes, my granddad was an architect. And he took a great interest in me when I was quite small and bought me good paint boxes and good paint brushes when I was about seven years old. And he sat me at his drawing board and and taught me about perspective. And he built me a T-square and... What's a T-square for anybody who doesn't know? A, a T-square is um, it's a way of drawing a, a straight edge okay. on a drawing board. So yeah, Grandad was a, a, a huge source of inspiration. And I suppose the architectural quality in a lot of my work comes, comes from him. He would have been very proud. I think he would have been impressed by, by the architectural elements, but yeah. a little bit baffled by my use of colour. So who else has inspired you? When I, was, when I was a young teenager, my dad used to take me out to art galleries and we would pick apart the compositions of paintings in, in city, city art galleries. And that was really useful, that was really interesting. And when I was very small, we'd have a storybook together and we'd also look at one of his art books together. And so this wasn't, you know, this wasn't children's books, this was, this was things like the Duke de Berry Book of Hours and... Um, um, some fairly grisly pictures. I loved grisly pictures when I was little. A picture of Mara who was stabbed in the bath in the French Revolution. I quite like that. I think, but when I was little, having looking at the picture books um, instilled a kind of an interest in, in art and, and yeah. going to art galleries was something that we did together and we did as a family. Yeah, and you learned to work things out and look at things in a different way. Yeah, yeah. it's learning to see, I think. It's just learning to see. Absolutely. Oh no, that's wonderful. Where can we buy your work? I apply several galleries. Hart Gallery in Hebden Bridge has a lot of work. They have framed and unframed prints and they're about to have all the originals. Harrison Lord in Brighouse sell framed prints. Dean Clough Design Shop have prints. I sell myself online, I have a web shop. And you can buy prints there and lanterns there. What's your website called? My website is www.katelysett.co.uk and I have a blog and um, and a portfolio of old, old work and, and I update it quite a lot. That's good and you're also on Facebook and Twitter aren't you? I am, yes. yes. It's my yeah. recent obsession. <laughs> well it's good to be connected isn't it in this day and age. Well it's been really good talking to you. Thank you so much. If you would like to know more about Kate Lysett go to www.katelysett.co.uk Thank you for listening.